hi guys so i think i might be in a reading slump and i think i need your help so if you watched my video last week you will have seen that i binged and just ate up the heartstopper graphic novel series some of alice oseman's books and then i also watched the heartstopper series on netflix fell completely in love with all of them and now i think i'm in a book slump and what is devastating about this is I am on a book buying ban until I finish, sorry if you can hear Lola running around. <laughs> um, I am on a book buying ban until I finish my TBR and my book buying ban needs to be done within two months because I'm going to New York. And of course, what is better in New York than book shopping? <sighs> so yeah, this reading slump is a real problem. I have read 6% of my current read in a week and it normally takes me two weeks or a week to read one physical book. And if you've watched my other videos, like my trip to Valencia, you will know that I'm super excited to read Once Upon a Broken Heart. And that is a book I am currently reading. I started it like during reading Heartstopper because I thought I'd want to weave between a graphic novel and a normal novel. I didn't, I just wanted to read Heartstopper. And what's really funny is in all of my other videos, I was like, oh no, Heartstopper won't stop me because I've been reading them like in a day and it's really quick to get through the series. So that won't delay me. The book slump after is, the reading slump after is really killing that plan. I thought I would do this video in the hopes that it will hold me accountable to reading this weekend and maybe I can finish this book with you. So I basically really need your help to get me through this reading slump to avoid it and so that hopefully I can finish this book and I can carry on with my TBR and finish on my anticipated deadline. I am on 44% of Once Upon a Broken Heart and I'm not loving it. I think the love interest hasn't really like come out yet. There's no chemistry or there's nothing like that that really gets me through a fantasy book. I thought it would be like a fourth wing for me, but it's really not been. Not in like the plot sense, but in the sense of how much I loved it because I've seen so many people online really hyping it up, but I'm just struggling to get into it. I think it's quite long and it's quite slow to start with and I'm just not gelling with the characters. And the same can be said about the audiobook that I'm reading, which is Love at First Night. I was gifted this book from HarperCollins and it's been sat on my TBR for so long. But the reason that I'm not really into reading it is because the plot isn't really my thing. When I first got it, I thought maybe it was a fantasy and they were in some kind of like medieval world or it was a human going into a medieval world and then they fell in love, but it's not at all. It's basically this girl grew up in Lincoln loving like the medieval era and her family do like these reenactments and things at like local community centers, I think. And then basically her dad gets her a job in London, like applies for it on her behalf. She gets it and it's in the Tower of London and she has to work with a Lord who is a bit, not very nice and is a bit rude to her, but they do loads of like tourism stuff with like young kids and things like that. It's like a summer job type vibe is what I'm getting, but I'm just not loving it. Again, I think that the plot is a bit far fetched for me. I sometimes like a bit more realistic plots and I couldn't connect with the main character and I'm kind of not really wanting to listen to it, but I know that the mix of me not wanting to listen to it is also because my work has been so busy that I haven't been able to listen to audiobooks or have any background noise because I've been in concentration mode. So this is where you guys come in. I am gonna film in the hope that this will hold me accountable and I will feel motivated to show you how much I read and it will get me out of my reading slump. But yeah, it's Saturday morning now. I'm hoping by the end of the weekend, I can maybe get between 60 and 80%. That would be ideal. But yeah, it depends how much I love the book, but I've also got to write my own novel and I need to study for my exam. So I'm a bit worried, but it is supposed to be really sunny tomorrow. So there's nothing better than sitting out in my parents' garden and reading my book and hopefully getting out of my reading slump. So I need this video to motivate me and I'm hoping it will do it and I won't get in a reading slump and I will be able to catch myself back up and get myself having finished all my books before going to my trip to New York in October. But yeah, we shall see. So I will update you. I'm currently on 44% and I'm not loving it. So hopefully I can turn it around and something will happen in this book that just grips me and I will fly through it this weekend, but we shall see. Obviously I'm doing anything but reading. This is your father day. on YouTube. The first time I've ever been on YouTube, I think. And here we go. You're just about to have. So, what would you like to do on YouTube? Are you going to eat that croissant? 
Or you can read my book. Let's go, let's put a broken heart. And is it a love story or is it a... It's a fantasy romance. Oh. It's romanticy. Oh. <laughs> the problem is, is I'm 44% of the way through. 44% you don't know what it's about. And That's a bad sign. <laughs> Saying, it's 44%, you don't know what it is. Excuse me, being a YouTube reviewer, but um, that's not good. When I read a book, I can't remember what it's about. What? Like, if you ask me what I've read two days earlier, I couldn't tell you. But you enjoy it on time. Yeah. So I'm coming at you with a massive fail of today. <laughs> I thought that vlogging me in a reading slump would help me get out of said reading slump. I listened to probably two minutes of my audiobook and I've gained 1% on my book. But actually, I won't be too hard on myself because I ended up writing some of a chapter this morning and I haven't been in a writing mood for a long time so I feel like that was good and then I studied a lot but I may have gone to home sense with my sister and did not need to didn't need anything bought stuff I don't need did get my friend's daughter a present though so that was good and then we had dinner plans as like a family tonight which was really nice so it's been a good day and Lola's coming to say hi Oh no, she's coming to eat her food because obviously as soon as I hit record, she starts eating and drinking. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a nice day, but I feel a bit bad for not having read. Although I'm gonna, it's not actually that late. Oh, she has come to say hi. Hello, you say hi? Hi. So yeah, it's not too late now. So I think we're gonna sit on the sofa and try and get to at least 50% of this book. So we'll see how it goes. So ignoring the dodgy lighting, the orange wall behind me as I'm at my parents' house, as you may know if you've seen some of my older videos, they have crazy decorated walls and then my dad's birthday balloons. <laughs> but I think the reason that I'm struggling with this book so much is the language and I also think the world building. I think people are supposed to have read Caravel before, but I hear a lot of the time, like, it's not an issue if you've not read Caravel. Sorry about this crazy lighting as well. <laughs> but yeah, apparently it's not an issue if you have read, haven't read, have read Caravel. But I think maybe it would have helped me because I think I would have got into the world. But then I also equally hear that Caravel doesn't get as high ratings as Once Upon a Broken Heart or that series. So I don't know if it would have put me off more, but every time I read a page, I just want to go and do something else. And I don't know if, like, I feel like 45% of the way through is a good percentage to DNF it, but I just don't want to because I've got two copies of this series. Like I've got the US covers and I've got the UK covers. I've got the US covers from Valencia because I was adamant I would love it. I guess this is teaching me a lesson not to buy things in the whole series and special editions before you've read the first book. But yeah, I'm going to keep going. I think by tomorrow I'll decide whether I'm DNFing it or not, but I'll be so sad if I do. I'm just praying something happens in this book to, like, get me hooked. Please, I beg for a plot twist or some romance. I need some romance.
been a while since I did an update, but it is Sunday evening and I finally had a day of reading that was way more successful <laughs> than yesterday. I mean, it wasn't that hard. It couldn't have got much worse than yesterday. Um, I did maybe like 2% of my book, but then today I managed to get to 65% of the way through the book, which is kind of the aim I set out with at the beginning anyway. So I feel like I did quite well. I think the problem with Once Upon a Broken Heart is that the language is very, very descriptive. And whilst it's world building, it's not world building. There's a lot of complicated things that you have to be aware of, but they don't really add anything because a lot of the time I lost concentration and I didn't pay attention to it, but I'm still understanding what's going on. It's just so descriptive that it's quite exhausting to read. And if you're picking up and putting down the book, you're losing the momentum, which I think was what made it worse. But as soon as it hit the 60% mark, I'm now interested in it and I actually want to read it and I'm gonna read a bit more tonight before I go to bed and I'm enjoying it, but I'm not gonna race to the second book unless there's probably a cliffhanger that will suck me in. So maybe I'll do it or maybe I'll keep the books till my 24 hour reading marathon, which I'm gonna do with my friends in a couple of weeks. Because with this one, you need to sit down and you need to give a couple of hours to read it each time. And I think the less smaller chunks of reading you do with this book, the better you'll find it. So maybe a reading marathon is a good way to finish the other two books in the series because I'll be concentrating. So who knows, I might do that. I'm just such a mood reader, so we'll see. I've got my some of my TBR with me upstairs at my parents' house so I can pick some other things to read as well, just depending on my mood. But I think because I had no plans today and I wasn't doing anything, it meant that I was really productive with my studying and I managed to get it done. I went for a walk with Lola this morning and we did an audiobook and I got, I did maybe an extra hour of this audiobook this whole weekend, which isn't bad, but it's not great for me. Like I would normally have finished the audiobook by now, but I didn't. But we had like an hour walk, so it was really nice to get through it. And then because I think I was concentrating on it instead of listening to it while I was working, it meant that I could actually focus on the plot and I started to really enjoy it. And I was like laughing at bits of it as well. I think the plot, I still stand by the fact that the plot's really silly and the way that like this Viscount or like a cousin of the actual royal family like so he's a royal but he's not in line to the throne the way that he meets this girl and that he's working there it just <laughs> it doesn't make sense and maybe that's just me wanting something to be realistic when really like the whole plot isn't realistic and it's supposed to be a romantic comedy anyway but I'm now really rooting for the couple now that I'm like I've got one hour left of this book I'm really rooting <laughs> for them and I really like them as a couple but I just don't feel connected to them so I think that will be like a solid three star maybe if I read it in paperback I'd feel different I don't really think it's the type of book I would want to read in paperback and I'd probably like because I take longer to read a book than listen to it I would have probably found it a bit tedious and something that I would just want to get through whereas I've been like laughing along as I listen like today so I'm excited to finish it hopefully tomorrow I've only got just over an hour left and then I studied I got so much studying done it, the weather's been really weird at the moment in the UK like it'll be cloudy in the morning and then the sun will break in the afternoon and it's like really hot it's been like almost 30 degrees today so in the morning and like midday, it was really cloudy. So I got loads of studying done. I did it outside. And then when the sun broke, I was done with my studying and I did everything I wanted to do today. And normally I'm really behind with it. So I was really happy and proud of myself. So then I think maybe I was just in a better mood to sit and read for a prolonged period of time because I wasn't thinking, oh, I've got to do this after, or I've got to do that. I could literally just sit out in the garden, sunbathe and read this book. So maybe that helped in me enjoy it a little bit more as well. So yeah, I'm 65% of the way through. Hopefully I'll finish today on about 70%. But I think the one sticking point I have with this book is it shouldn't take 60% of the book to then enjoy it and want to read it. But I know that that's just 60% in one book and there's three books, so we'll see. I don't think I was in a reading slump. I just think maybe I was. Maybe I was just like distracting myself too much with a million and one things. Like I have an exam coming up in two weeks. I'm at home, this is my first weekend at home with my family. So obviously I'm gonna to wanna to see my sister and do all of that. So I'm gonna be nice to myself and I've been writing a bit more. I think maybe when my momentum with writing my own book comes out, reading other people's kind of goes down. So it's it's a bit of a balance. So I think I've done it and I need to be like kinder to myself and reading is fun. So I should only pick up a book when I actually want to read it. But I would say if you're thinking about reading Once Upon a Broken Heart, read it in as many like, 
the least amount of sittings for the longest amount of time as you can. If you're someone that can sit and read a book in a day, maybe that's the kind of way to do it. I'm not like that. Instead of like, for me, I was sat, if I'm sat on the tube reading it, it's like five minutes. And so you don't get time to fully go into it. So if you're wanting to get into it, definitely read it when you've got the time and capacity to read it. And I have to say, you have to fully be in the mood to enjoy it because I think otherwise you might find some of the plot a bit long and I feel like some of the scenes might be a bit unnecessary but maybe they all tie in together but I'm glad that I've started to enjoy it more. I haven't had that massive like this plot has changed and I'm loving it but I'm enjoying it way more than I was yesterday so thank you so much for watching and helping me get out of my reading slump and holding me accountable. I read way more today than I thought I would so I'm very proud of myself and hopefully both of these books will be done. My audiobook and my reading book on my kindle Once Upon a Broken Heart will be done in the next couple of days and Love at First Night should hopefully be done tomorrow when I walk Lola in the morning. Bye.